Hey, everyone. I am here with Missy Maxwell Wharton. She, uh, she's an author. She's a speaker. We just um, did a couple episodes of the podcast. It was so much fun. You can find her at missymaxwellwharton.com. And her book is titled Don't Mess With This Mama. And what a fantastic message she has in that book, Risking It All to Rescue Our Daughter is the subtitle of the book. She, it's a true story. She went to Ethiopia, rescued their daughter, went through a whole litany of things just to get her back here. And it's just... It, you have to listen to the podcast episodes if you haven't um, when they go live. Missy, thanks for sticking around to do this. Ah, it's my, my pleasure. Good to see you again, Mario. Yeah. So after we did those episodes, like what, what stands out in your mind? Is there anything that like stood out from recording together that, you know, that's just on your mind or your heart right now? You know, just the goodness of God. I, I think just that, that our lives are, so strategically lived out and uh even without without us knowing it is um is is what i kind of take away from that yeah are there some decisions you can think of that you made in your life that you know you think about now and you're like man if i would have done that differently i'd be in a whole different place oh yeah yeah there was a decision i had uh early on where i could have gone to Los Angeles and, and been an actress, or I could come to Nashville, which is where I came, and uh, become a, a singer. And that choice changed everything because that's how, you know, I, I married my husband, started having children, and realized that the, I, I was called to motherhood. I, I love children. I love teaching them that they have great authority in their destiny and just to be world changers. And that's what I hope my four kids are. And so your four kids, one, one is a favor is adopted. Favor is your daughter yeah. that you brought back from Ethiopia. Are the other yeah. three, are they, are they yours or did you adopt the, well, well? our first, our firstborn is actually 22 now. And he is, uh, he's our firstborn. And um, then we had a daughter who's 19 in college. And then we adopted our our first uh, adoption was a young boy from Ethiopia, and he was what you call a waiting child. His name's Shawit, and he is a phenom when it comes to soccer. He's, he's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And Favor, did she come from the same area in Ethiopia? No, they actually... They actually came from, he came from the northern area of Eritrea, and she came from the, the southern area. So very different, very different. How do they interact, being that they're from the same country, at least? Is that like, was it interesting to see when they came together? It was funny because, uh, you know, Shuit was very excited. He was going to have a, a little sister. He wasn't going to be the baby anymore. And uh, she got here, and Ethiopian women are very strong. And, you know, so she let him have it. The first time he did something, she let him have it. And he was just like, whoa, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> but uh, he, he loves her. Uh, they, the whole family embraced her. And uh, they just, she is definitely a Wharton. Definitely a Wharton. <laughs> That's fantastic. She she was uh well, I mean from the story it sounds like she was meant to be with you anyway. So I mean, yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't like you had to make her a Wharton. She might, it seems like she was born that way. Yeah, she was. And and before we ever got her, people kept saying she's perfect for you. You just this is your child and my husband and I both laugh about it and we thought, well, is she loud and obnoxious? Is this why everybody's saying she's a Wharton? Um because it seemed like every child progressively was getting louder and louder. And it was true. She was very loud. She is still very loud. <laughs> <laughs> so she's very strong. How how old is she now? She is fifteen now. Mm -hmm. 15. Oh boy. She's going to be driving 15. soon. She is. <laughs> oh, I see the look on your face. <laughs> but she is smart. And um, I tell you something about her. She now, she wants to be a lawyer and she uh, has decided that she wants to be one of these lawyers, uh, attorneys that wants to go and fight for justice for these children so that they can come and have a family as well. Cause they have shut down Ethiopia for adoption now. And uh, she's just like, they are missing out on everything that I got because I was adopted. And of course, nobody wants a child to be an orphan. I, that's not the point, but it, it's for an orphan to have a family is so valuable. Um, to who they see themselves. That's a fantastic thing for someone who's very strong 
and someone who you said is very loud. I can't think of a better profession. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And she is very good at winning arguments. <laughs> so. And to be the voice for people who need it. I think that's something that's very needed too. So, yeah. I mean, when you look at your story and you look mm -hmm. at the challenges you had to go through, I mean, it continues through her. So, you know, it when does. she does this and she makes this big impact, I mean, everything you had to do just will be amplified through that. Absolutely. And that's, that's the way we live our life. Our children are watching and, you know, it's more in how we live our life. And, and I work with a lot of mothers that they're like, what if, what if I didn't get my kids ready in time for college? And what if they just mess up? And it's like, no, you've had their whole life to teach them through the actions, how you loved others, how you treated other people. Um, that, that's the true lesson there. It's not in all the words you tell your kids. It's the life you live out in front of them and they become exactly what you are. And when you look at the bigger picture, like it's, you don't see it when you're in it, right? When you were in Ethiopia mm -hmm. and you were in hiding and, you know, mm -hmm. people were coming to try to take your daughter and you were in this precarious situation. That's all you saw at that point. And you're just trying to survive day to day. But now that this has unfolded and you've you know, broken through it, you've overcome the challenges, you're here, you can see how this is so much bigger than that situation at the time. Absolutely. It's, um, I think most of things, most of the hard things we go through that make us who we are now, we would have never signed up for it. And I, I think that's, the glory of it is that uh, things happen to us and we have to figure out what was already in us to come out on the other side. So what we're seeing right now is what people already were. It's just being revealed uh, who they were. So, you know, I'm seeing a lot of great things come out of people right now and it's a beautiful thing. That's great. And then, you know, everyone, I believe anyway, God will never give you more than you can handle. And Ooh. I remember that reminds me of the famous, one of my favorite quotes from mother Teresa was God will never give mm. you more than you can handle. And she would say, well, I just wish he didn't trust me so much, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that being said, I mean, it's such a pertinent quote to your yeah. story. It is. And, and you know what, it's, it's really, we think we want to live in the comfort zone, but the reality is, is we get new life when we're not in the comfort zone, when we're challenged to be more than we think we are. You know, God never calls us to what we think we can do. He calls us way beyond that because we're not doing it on our own strength. We're doing it on his strength. So it's, if we would just trust going back to the trust that we talked about. Well, to that point, too, I think that when you look back through history and you look at like, if you go back to the Bible and you look at like the apostles and you look at how things played out, I mean, God typically, and this is just my, my opinion, but he likes to show himself through people that you wouldn't expect because it shows more of, of what he's capable of. Like if he takes the most powerful person in the world and makes them do something and has calls them to do something that they do. Yeah, that's, that's nice. But it's like, well, they're the most powerful person in the world. They have all these resources and everything there. But if you can take someone like Matthew's a tax collector and turn them into yeah. uh, uh, someone who wrote one of the gospels, now that's pretty, that's mm -hmm. pretty impressive. Like the total opposite to, you know, just, it's like a three, it's complete 180. Exactly. I mean, you look at David, how many times did David mess up? And yet God, he was the apple of his eye. Um, but then I look at the generals of the faith that are, have lived in the last 500 years. You look at, they were some messed up individuals and God goes, hmm, I'm going to use him <laughs> or, or her. And they end up changing uh, destinies. They end up changing cultures because they lived a life that was not afraid to go beyond what they thought they could do. Yeah. And, I and think they let of, God. I think one of the best examples of that, if you want to go back to the Bible, is St. Paul. I mean, oh, look, at, yes. look at that story. <laughs> I mean, right there, it's just, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. That, and look at Gideon. I, mm -hmm. I mean, Gideon didn't think anything of himself. And God went, you mighty warrior, you. And yeah. me? So it's, it's a, I, I love the way God picks the most unlikely and puts them out there to change the world. And I think it's the, the messages, whether, you know, whether you're religious or not, whatever, spiritual, not spiritual, whatever your beliefs are, go where you're pulled. If you feel called, go explore that and see. I mean, it's, I think that's the, whenever I always say, whenever you push something or you try to push to make something happen, whatever you push pushes back. 
But if you go where you're pulled, then you can explore it. There's nothing pushing against you. I mean, there's still be challenges because you have to grow to get to certain places, but why make it harder than it has to be? Go yeah. where you feel pulled, see, go explore that, see what's all there, and you can always make decisions. One of the things I believe God gives us, or you can believe whatever you want, but one of the things I believe God gives us is, you know, the most, one of the most powerful things he gives us, I'll say, is free will. So we can mm -hmm. make decisions. We can decide whether we want to do this or do that. We can decide whether we want to explore this or explore that. So utilize that and see what's out there and go where it feels right. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, you know, it's, it's all about unlocking your destiny so that you can walk out your life in an authority and leave a, an everlasting legacy. And, but the way you find that out is what are you, what do you already enjoy? What, what do people look at you and go, man, you're really good at this. I mean, what are those things you're, you're being told every day by what you love to do and what you lose time doing? I, you know, I can write for hours and, and all of a sudden go, oh, wow. Okay. Wait a minute. I need to stop. I need to feed the kids, <laughs> you know? but it comes easy. It's not something you have to fight for. Yeah, absolutely. Missy, thank you so much for being here and doing this and the podcast and everything. I've had so much fun. Your story is so powerful. And I remind people to visit you at missymaxwellwharton.com and, you know, grab a copy of your book as well. Don't mess with this mama risking it all to rescue our daughter. Great, great book. Great story. Um, I've just had so much fun. Thank you. And we have to do it again thank real soon. You. I would love that, Mario. Thank you for having me.